Sony Xperia 1 series always had one of the best smartphone camera in the market. The only problem was it was not easy to use even for most of the tech reviewers. So Sony took all the feedback, made some changes, added some features, slapped on a new sensor and came up with this. This is Xperia 1 Mark V and it comes in this environmentally friendly box. Inside the box we're greeted with Xperia 1 Mark V and that's pretty much it. This elegant beauty has Snapdragon 8 generation 2 chipset, 5G sub 6 network connection and 256 gigabyte internal storage. Also you can add a micro SD up to 1 terabyte. The 6.5 inch 21 by 9 4K 120 Hz HDR OLED display is gorgeous. At the front we have 12 megapixel front facing camera that has 1 over 2.9 inch sensor and it can record videos up to 4K 64 frames per second. At the back we have a 12 megapixel 16 millimeter ultra wide angle camera with 1 over 2.5 inch sensor, a 52 megapixel 24 millimeter wide angle camera with 1 over 1.35 inch quad bear sensor and 12 megapixel 85 to 125 optical telephoto zoom camera with 1 over 3.5 inch sensor. And all of the rear cameras can shoot up to 4k 120 20 frames per second and all of the cameras can shoot in Sony's legendary Cinetone color profile. Xperia 1 Mark V has new speakers that sounds much fuller and 5000 mAh battery which charges to 50% in 30 minutes, IP6568 water resistance, Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 at the front and back, headphone jack, fingerprint scanner, volume rocker, a shutter button that can be half pressed for focusing and it can be used as a monitor and a recorder if you have a compatible camera. So I guess the question is, is this 1400 US dollar beauty any good? Before we move on, I like to talk about how much I enjoy making the shot on insert product name parts of my video because that really showcases what a product can do to the product's capabilities and to my capabilities. And there's a very big difference between reading the specs, looking at the specs or making some tests and going outside using the product in real life. And this is how I prepare my shot on videos. I read the specs. I do my tests and then I pre-plan my shoots and I go outside and I shoot and then I come home and then put the footage on my computer, make sure everything is okay and then I start building the rest of the video. And usually just like how you cannot wow yourself with your own guitar playing, I, I'm, I have very little products that really wows me when I come home and put the footage on the computer like FX3 or like my iPhone and this has been one of those products. Every time I come back home and put the footage into the computer and I saw what it did, I wanted to go back outside the next day and capture something else. And I, and I think that is really important. That is the inspiration of the product. Which is why, for example, on Instagram or on YouTube Shorts, you don't see much creativity but on TikTok, it's creativity everywhere because that app, for some reason, that community over there sparks inspiration. And then the others poorly copy it a couple of weeks later. So this phone sparks inspiration and I love that about it. 
The main camera on this phone has a new sensor. It is a 52 megapixel quad bear sensor, but the effective area makes this uh, 48 megapixel camera. And I really wish all the other cameras had the same sensor because this new Exmor T uh, sensor is fantastic and it performs really well. I also really enjoyed this 24 millimeter lenses minimum focus distance because we see a lot of phones that they say it's made for vlogging but the person who's vlogging is not in focus because the minimum focus distance is not that good. This is really good and it is really good for vlogging because it has that natural depth of field that is not AI or anything. And it really doesn't look like it's shot on a phone, which is something I really admired. Now, ultra wide angle camera is okay. I had no problems with it. Of course, ultra wide angle does not require an optical image stabilization because you can save the footage with electronic image stabilization. So just like all the other phones out there, the ultra wide angle does not have optical image stabilization. And the performance is good. I, I, I liked, I have no problems with the ultra wide angle, but I'm so used to the macro capability of the ultra wide angle on my iPhone. I wanted this to have maybe something similar so I can get really close to the things I'm filming. The telecameras are really good. It zooms, optically zooms from 85 millimeter to 125 millimeter. 85 millimeter and 125 millimeter is actually something we love to shoot portrait photos and stuff like that where the compression and everything makes the proportions of a person's face look the best compared to 24 millimeter where you look like, you know, a little blown up like a like a balloon and then with the ultra wide angle of course even worse so you don't get close to the subject with the ultra wide angle and wide angle you want to use the tele lens for portrait which works great but this is a periscope camera and i don't really like periscope cameras because they always are prone to the shake and then they're hard to stabilize and then the footage is always not that great compared to the other cameras and uh, the light streaks look really weird with the periscope camera but this amongst all the periscope cameras I've used is the best one the stabilization works really good yes you see that softness in the image a little bit but it is the best um, having 85 to 125 optical zoom is great. It's really good. But if it didn't have it, if it only had 85 or 125, I wouldn't complain about it either. Also, the telephoto camera has the weakest autofocus compared to the others. Uh, it's not bad, but it is not as good. Now the front facing camera is probably the best I've seen on an Xperia phone. It records up to 4K 60 frames per second. It's a fixed focus lens and it just gets the job done. And this is the front facing camera. Stabilization turned on and we're recording in 4K 23.98 frames per second. And everything is set to auto. One thing that makes Xperia very special compared to the other phones is the camera apps we have on this device. The Photo Pro app is the app you use for photos, but you can actually go to the basic here. And in basic mode, this is very much like uh, the standard smartphone user interface that we have, where we have things like the portrait mode. So if I go here, I choose bokeh, then I choose the depth of, um, field I want and I can adjust the brightness let's turn it down a little bit so we get a photo like that it's not the best it's of course but it's not the worst either we also have the night photo feature which is here in the basic mode and also you can find it in the regular modes as well but also, I don't know if you noticed, now we can hold the phone vertically. The user interface switches to the vertical mode, which is great. But if you go this way, 
it doesn't rotate if you go upside down it just rotates as if you're holding it this way so sony usually concentrates on the fact that we have a shutter button here that you can half press to focus and then we have the fingerprint sensor and then volume up and down rocker so it is usually based on the fact that you're gonna take a photo holding the phone like this or now like this when it comes to photos you can shoot raw raw plus jpeg or just jpeg now there is the cinema pro app this is an app that is based off of the cinema cameras the venice cameras sony have this user interface and everything is based off of the venice cameras so you start a project you create a project and then you decide on the resolution and then the frame rate and then that's how you start shooting your project you cannot start filming indoors in this lighting situation and then walk outside and expect this camera to uh, follow what's going on this is a super professional camera that is built to be used that way so you adjust your shutter angle you can select auto but it doesn't stay at auto it gives you an auto shutter angle for this situation and you cannot switch between lenses just like how you cannot switch between lenses using that camera it is the same mentality which is a lot of fun for people like me but i understand that it may not be the best experience for everyone out there we have another app called the video pro app which is my favorite app and I shot everything that you saw in the intro using the video pro app and I think it's the best for everyone I think it's the best of both worlds first of all as you can see it supports vertical filming which is great I can hit record and start recording this way and I can share it on the social platforms that supports vertical filming but did you hear that starting record and stopping record sounds the same which is never the case with our cameras this is recording this is when you stop recording and it is something that i know so well that it kind of throws me off when it starts recording with this sound and stops recording with the same sound i don't know why they're not changing it but they, they really should also cinema pro app captures in 21 by 9 but this captures in 16 by 9 and the difference is this captures bigger picture taller picture compared to the other one it's not like the other cinema pro app is capturing a wider video it's just cutting from top and bottom that's why i use this one because i get a, a bigger picture I just realized what I said and besides HDR what you can do is you can go here and you can start recording in Escinetone and if you don't know what Escinetone is it is the legendary picture profile that we have on these cameras that makes things super easy it's a really nice looking um, picture profile that gives you very cinematic looking footage and we love using it and now it is on a phone and it looks great you can also shoot in regular bt709 or you can switch to hlg uh, bt2020 but i shot everything in escinetone i locked this phone on escinetone and i'm and i'm really happy with it as you can see i can tap on shutter and i can select whatever i want i can tap on iso i can select whatever i want I can switch between autofocus, manual focus, I can adjust the focus myself. And actually on the CinePro app, what you can do is you can go to focus, you can switch to manual focus, and you can decide on two points of focusing. For example, and then tap on this, it finds the point, and then you say this is A, and then you tap on that, and then you say that is B, go to A racking focus just like that and you can change the focus pull speed let's say you want to do that slower go to a go to b it is incredible it's like a professional camera and another extremely useful feature is peaking so if you want to see where your focus is 
now we have peaking this helped me so much while i was really in the sunlight really close to the flowers to understand what is in focus and what is not it helped me quite a lot this is a fantastic feature in general and i'm really happy now that it is on this phone also now there is a new stabilization which is called high quality stabilization which crops the image even more than standard but gives you more gimbal like footage let me show you how much it crops this is high quality this is standard and this is when the stabilization is turned off and it works fine on every lens as well but it only works up to 30 frames per second about 30 frames per second you can only use the standard stabilization and if you go up to 120 frames per second there is no stabilization you're on your own and if you want you can pair a remote controller which means you can use something like this which means you can use this remote zoom in zoom out start recording stop recording switch between lenses it's very useful and on top of that we have a product showcase mode and let me show you what that is normally when the product showcase is not turned on when you have the eye autofocus turned on when you hold something closer to the camera the camera does not focus on this but keeps the focus in my eye because that's why we're using the eye autofocus now let me go ahead and turn product showcase on and in order to do that you gotta stop recording so now what happens is whenever i hold something up the camera focuses on the closest thing to the camera which means if you're talking about a product product showcase mode you can use this of course one of the questions we have when it comes to xperia phones how is the overheating situation well i'm really happy to report that this device didn't overheat i was shooting 4k 24 frames per second over an hour and the room temperature was around 78 degrees fahrenheit and i didn't even see the overheating sign the phone warmed up to a level and it seems like it just stopped there while i was outside shooting 120 frames per second in 4k i didn't see the overheating sign as well which is a really good sign and i think compared to the other xperia phones you will not have a problem with overheating when it comes to this device when it comes to switching between lenses which is something our iphones do really well and the xperia phones before this one some of them did it it was it was okay but it was not that good this one is much better still not on iphone level but it does switch between lenses in a much smoother way which is nice to see as you can see at the back we don't have the depth sensor in anymore instead of we have a microphone which also means when we go to the menu here we have a microphone selection you can either select all directions or voice priority which picks the rear microphone and another feature we have on this device is very similar to the uh, xperia phones where we can connect a usb cable over here and then go to our monitor and then select live stream as you can see now we're monitoring what this camera is seeing and i can go and change the brightness of this screen and what else i can do is i can go to this play and select what i want to see if i want to see grid lines if I want to see grid lines, I can pick that. If I want to see frame lines, I can see that. And I can change what kind of frame lines I want to see, which is great. Like if you're shooting vertical, if you're shooting horizontal and then you're going to crop it to post in vertical. Now you have a frame of reference, if you will. Of course, you can, when you turn this on, you can change. You have some options there as well. There's waveform, which is fantastic. There's false color you can customize the colors and then there's zebra <laughs> and then we have peaking and the and the good good thing is let's say for display one i can turn on these two and for display two i can pick on uh, pick the false color 
So when I tap, when I tap here, I can go to display one and see that quickly, and I can switch to display two and see the false color quickly. Very useful and very nice feature. But as you can see, at the bottom here, we have a record button, and when you tap on that, you start recording. We Now, this is not just a monitor, it's also a recorder. Of course, it is recording in 1080p, 30 frames per second in the H.265, but it is recording. So when you need to get the job done, this device does more. Also here, there's a mode button. But by the way, as you can see, we're monitoring the audio as well. And uh, it has streaming mode. When you tap on it, you can put in your server information and start streaming using the internet on this device You with using the footage coming from your camera. Streaming is a big part of Xperia phones. Of course, if we go to the, the Video Pro app, as you can see at the bottom here, we have streaming information there where you can stream directly from this phone as well. And of course, gaming is a big part of this Xperia phone. And when you go to gaming, you can start streaming your game. And when you hit the shutter button, you can take a screen cap as well. And the good thing about gaming is if you want, you can connect your device to power and it bypasses the battery. So it's not charging the battery, which means it's not creating heat, which means you can play the game longer without losing processing power. The speakers on this device is really good. It's much better than the previous Xperia phones. And because they're facing you, both of them, they sound really good. I, I really like the sound coming out of this device. And the design and feel, Xperia phones are always really elegant looking. They're taller, thinner, and they don't scream. And this is no exception. By the way, this is glass, even though it has this texture. And it supports wireless charging, by the way. And the reason it doesn't support super fast charging, Sony says it's because it wants to give you the best uh, battery health possible. They give you three years uh, battery health without degradation. Now there are a couple of things I like to mention. The rear camera doesn't, rear cameras doesn't support eye autofocus about 30 frames per second. You cannot take raw photo in the night mode. And then my last complaint is there's no eSIM. That's it. Those, those are my notes. Those are all the complaints I have. I also like to add, even though the ISO goes lower on Xperia 1 Mark V, just like many smartphones and cameras, if you like to get the cinematic 180 degree shutter speed under sunlight, you need to attach an ND filter to your camera. And at certain angles, the screen dims if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. Okay, now I'm done complaining. And of course, no camera test can be considered complete scientifically until I do the tunnel test. And what you'll be hearing here is the microphone from the phone and I didn't turn on the wind noise reduction or anything, so it is a little noisy. How are we doing? I see the road. Better be good. About to exit the tunnel. So I guess we can add wind noise reduction and microphone quality while we're outdoors to the complaint list as well. And this is what the microphone on Xperia 1 Mark V sounds when we're indoors and we set the microphone to voice isolation which uses the microphone right next to the cameras and I hope it sounds good. So in conclusion, I think this is clearly the best Xperia phone ever made. And I have to send this back to Sony. I don't know how that's going to happen, but it's supposed to happen. It is here for this review, which just arrived a couple of days ago, and I've been shooting with it nonstop. It's been a pleasure. And everything worked right out of the box it came in. I think in the end, they made this phone so much more accessible for everyone just lock this phone in as Cinetone and start shooting and tell people that you shot this with a7s3 
I don't think they'll realize the difference. I almost forgot, there's also an app called Music Pro where you can record your music on this phone. You can even record your vocals using the microphone and then if you like you can send it to Sony where they treat your vocals and send you the best version of it back. It requires subscription but it is something I really want to try one day, sounds very interesting and I love to see the difference between this app and the free AI vocal isolation features that some apps have. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. It's nice to be back here. We have construction happening, so every video I need to go outside. It's, it's fun to ba be back in this space. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think about Sony Xperia Mark V in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoşçakalın.